hey guys and welcome to the first ever episode of the AC Milan career mode on FIFA 18. Now a few things I need to point out really quickly. This is going to be a test run of the career mode. I may and probably will have to restart this once the actual game comes out because this still is the FIFA 18 beta but I couldn't resist. I just had to try out career mode and see what it's like currently in the unfinished version of FIFA 18 and of course we're going to do that with a team I'm doing every FIFA pretty much. I am tempted to do the older career modes as well in FIFA 18 but for safety and for um, good old time's sake I'm probably going to start with AC Milan. I'm not going to cut anything in these first few scenes. I want to show you everything as well. This is more like a demo of showing you what career mode might be like and when we get the real game, the real deal that's when we'll see how good it actually is because this is still unfinished but it's a good indicator as to how good or how bad career mode will be will it have been changed a lot or will it be very similar to last year's edition and as you can see right here in terms of managers choices and, and faces and avatars you have it's pretty much the same no changes here whatsoever the only big change i know of so far is transfer windows and businesses how they do things with release clauses, with cutscenes and everything, which looks really good. But I want to see a little bit more as well. I'm hoping they've added some new stuff other than just transfers, because outside a transfer window, the game cannot be boring. And I hope they have made some changes to that. Again, the settings, no real surprises there. I do play on uh, Legendary. I can't connect to the EA servers, which is fair enough. Default uh, squads. Interactive transfer negotiations. Welcome to FIFA 18's manager career. One of the biggest innovations in the mode this year is the addition of interactive transfer negotiations. That's what we know, that's what we've seen. Uh, Cutscenes, release clauses, everything about transfers has been improved. It's more in depth, which is cool, which is good. I like that. But I want to see something else. Let's find out. My main issue with last year's FIFA and the years before that was that the AI was very boring and predictable to play in career mode. It's pretty much the same whether you play Barcelona or Barnet. It feels the same. The computer is a very predictable opponent and I'm hoping this time around they've made it a lot more interesting. I've played one offline game so far on this beta and I have to say one big difference I've noticed is the computer scores more goals, which is good, and you are able to dribble past opponents with skill moves, with ball rolls, with everything. It makes it a little bit more dynamic. You don't just have to pass it or run it past the uh, AI. You can actually dribble them this time with skills, which is fantastic. I'd love to use skills and improve my gameplay offline, but the computer was just too good at reading what you're going to do next. This time around, it seems like they have changed that. And hopefully that will be in the game as well, because I like how you can now drill past AI opponents and how they score in more goals. It needs to be a bit of a challenge. Right, we're looking at the main screen here again. Central squad transfers office season. No real changes there. However, what I'm seeing in the breaking news thing is it's not just text. It's a little bit more vibrant, if you know what I mean. The way it pops up, the way it shows things. The signing of Andrea Conti. Is it a clip? Is it going to be a video clip instead of an actual picture? It is. Okay. Maybe that's not spectacular and we'll get used to that very soon, but it, it's a nice touch. It's not actually a video, is it? You just see their heads move a little bit. Other than that, the, okay, the news bit, okay, that's fine. There's nothing spectacular there, really. In terms of messages, what have we got? We've got the preseason tournament, of course. Uh, the objectives they brought in last FIFA stays the same, although they might actually be a lot more challenging this time. They were too easy. You could never get sacked on FIFA 17. Looking at this, they want to sign a player with potential over uh, 75. Again, that's probably very easy to do. Brand exposure, 90 million from shirt sales is easy. Reduce player wages by 100,000 a week. Now that is a challenge. There is no way the game will allow you to offer a player a contract and give them reduced wages and they'll just accept that. I don't see that happening. So this basically means you need to thin out your squad, sell players and, and make sure the wage budget drops. I don't think you could renegotiate with players and have them play for reduced wages. So this is a bit of a strain on your squad depth probably. That again, only if objectives actually matter in this game because they didn't in FIFA 17. You could not get sacked no matter how low your manager rating was. Um, round of 16 of the Copa Nacional, finish in the Champions League, spots realistic like Milan in real life, qualify for the Champions League, 
and then within three seasons we reach the Champions League final. I like this one. This is a little bit more challenging, but again, we need to feel the effects of us failing or succeeding with objectives, otherwise it's pointless having them there. Uh, trans winner as well. We will make a signing. I just want to see what it's like. I'm probably going to go for Renato Sanchez, Belotti or Aubameyang in uh, this video to see what it's like and how easy or hard it is to sign players. I would love it if they made it more challenging to sign certain players, like Football Manager does, for example. But anyways, I've seen the objectives. Scout report, again, very similar to what it was. <laughs> Talking about the devil, Andrea Belotti is right here. Let's uh, scout him completely. And uh, hopefully we'll get a report very soon. But again, no real change in terms of the scouting network. That is fine. Giovanni Russo is our scout. Fantastic. Let's advance. Let's not advance. Let's do training. Has that changed a little bit? Can you now train pace? That could be an interesting question. There are some things you could not train on career mode last FIFA. And it seems, again, it's the same. No changes to the training system. You cannot tra train pace. Um, sprint speed, acceleration... Uh, strength, I don't think you can train strength as well. That kind of stuff is not available for training, which is fair enough. Considering it's a test run, I'm not going to bother with the drills. I'm not going to waste my time there. We are actually going to go straight in to the transfer window and look for Sanchez. Renato Sanchez is relatively achievable and realistic, I want to say. However, I could be wrong. Maybe Bayern will be very tough in negotiating a uh, price for Renato Sanchez. Again, his stats were pretty good. He's worth 14 and a half. We're not currently in a transfer window, I assume, because I can only add him to my shortlist, unless I have to go to this little bit right here, which is the transfer um, hub. Now, now we can start signing him. Okay, that's how it works. You find players, you get them on your shortlist, you go to the transfer hub, and that is when you can find uh, the option to negotiate whatever it is you want to do. Delegate to buy, delegate to loan. I assume I'm asking my board to take care of this. I don't want to do that though. I want to buy Renato Sanchez or maybe loan and buy. I'm not sure, but this is going to be the cutscene. It's Carlo Ancelotti as well. Right. That is fantastic. Last FIFA, we know they only had Premier League managers in the game. Carlo Ancelotti confirmed FIFA 18 career mode. Fantastic. I want more managers. I want them to focus on more than just the Premier League. This is brilliant. I love that. Right, uh, for Sanchez, I'm not going to offer... Should I offer a swap? Let's uh, let's offer... I think we've got Niang and Baka still on this one. Yes, we have. We're going to get rid of Carlos Baca. I know it may be overkill slightly to offer Carlos Baca, but we'll suggest it anyways to Carlo Ancelotti. What does he have to say? What do you think, Carlo? Give us your thoughts. Okay, they are considering swapping him, but they want a right, back, a right back. This is not just mindless negotiating based on the value of a player. They're actually looking at their squad and realizing what they need in order to um, strengthen their own squad, which is fantastic. Again, another dimension to it. It's just not just about the numbers you see, about the values and everything. It's about more than that. It's about what their team needs, which I like a lot. We've got 44 million in the budget. Let's go straight in for a 20 million bid with a sell-on clause. I'm going to give them 5%. This is what I do in Football Manager as well. I don't want to give them a lot because if I sell someone for a lot of money, then a big chunk gets taken away from that, which I don't want to do. Let's propose this. Oh, no, sorry. Not, no, not propose. Submit offer. 20 million plus a 5% future sale compensation for Renato Sanchez. What will Carlo Ancelotti say? Okay, Carlo Ancelotti has accepted that. He's very happy. Negotiations went down relatively quickly. Um, I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. I'm hoping that negotiating for players will actually be a challenge and you can't always get what you want in transfer windows just like in real life, which would be good. Um, now, I need to negotiate personal contracts as well with these players, of course, or with their agents. Let's see what this is all about. Oh, here he is, Renato Sanchez in suit. He's got the actual game face this time around as well, I think. I mean, yeah, looks better than the FIFA 17 version, uh, to say the least. Let's uh, let's take a to let's take a look at what we have to do here. He wants to have an important squad role. Can I give him that? I need to think. We will have Lucas Biglia, although he's not in this career mode actually. Lucas Biglia 
and uh, Bonucci are not in the team as of yet. So I'm actually willing to accept important squad role, but for the sake of experimenting, let's see what he says if I drop it down to rotation. Let's see what they say about that. I'm assuming they will not accept that. He's looking a bit angry at me there, <laughs> Renato Sanchez. We need to test it out. We need to test the waters. What's he going to say? That's not going to work. He needs to be one of the... Okay, so they're they're standing their ground, which is fair enough. Um, I will this time take the important squad role. I will accept it. Let's just go for that straight away. We know what this is about. We know Sanchez wants to play. There's no point in trying again. The rotation will not be accepted. Um, so he's happy now. He's smiling a little bit, which is good. He expects to sign a five-year deal. Fantastic. I'm happy with a five-year deal. But again, for the sake of experimenting, let's offer him three years and see what they say about that. Is it possible to actually negotiate these things or will it not be possible? Three-year deal for Sanchez. Is that good enough? Again, he's looking at me like he, he wants to punch me in the face, which is fair enough. I do look like a bit of a twat sitting at my desk, not agreeing with anything. All right, again, they've countered it. But for the sake of experimenting, now I'm going to offer him four years. And if he doesn't accept that, I'll go for five. It'd be interesting to find out if they can actually break down in transfer negotiations over things like this. Will they step out of this deal? Will they back out and say, OK, this doesn't work. We don't want anything to do with you. Uh, we're not going to listen to any more offers. You say it's over. It's done. Is that an option? OK, but this time he has accepted four years. Fair enough. OK, so you can negotiate contract length, which is good to see. Let's move on to the most important thing, I assume. Uh, isn't considering adding a release clause to his contract, but we wouldn't turn down a reasonable proposal. So, I'm assuming because of Milan's reputation, he doesn't need or want a release clause. He's happy to be here and he assumes Milan will have a bright future. He doesn't want a quick exit. He doesn't want the option to leave when a team offers us the release clause money, the prize money that's been decided in advance. So Sanchez is convinced by the project we have here at Milan, which is good. Uh, wages. The quality of his client, uh, blah, blah, blah. He deserves to be on 68,000 a week. Signing a bonus of 37,000 and 280,000 after um, 10 appearances. Now, that is a lot. I will edit the wage and the bonus. Um, the sum. Basically, after 10 games, he'll be, he'll be receiving this amount of money from our transfer budget. And that could hamper your transfer budget after a while. Because if you've got 20 players signed on a, on a clause like that, you might end up being bankrupt. So you need to be careful when assigning these bonuses left and right. Editing wage. Again, I'm going to drop down the wage to 58 and the signing bonus to 350. Submit that. I'm, I'm feeling the football manager vibes here the way they're doing things with bonuses and signing bonuses and appearance bonuses and whatever and release clause and everything which is good i mean thank god it changed um now okay we counter offered they counter offer back to us and they've changed they've dropped down a little bit we're getting closer to each other and this time for the sake of the video and not to drag it out too long i'm going to accept welcome to the squad Renato Sanchez, after he passes his medical, of course. I don't even know if medicals are a thing. Could he fail his medical on FIFA 18? I don't know. Now, I've added Bonucci and Biglia to my uh, shortlist as well. I'm not expecting to be able to sign Bonucci. Maybe I'll be able to uh, sign Biglia like in real life. Uh, however, I will not show you the full thing again like I did just then. That was to showcase what it's like. Let's see if I can, uh, can get either of these two to the to sign because that's what it's like in real life. I want it to be realistic. Now I've added Le Leonardo Borucci and Lucas Biglia to the shortlist. I'm going to try and sign both of them. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be able to sign Bonucci in this game because he is a high profile player from a rival. I assume that's going to be too tough. I'm not going to show you everything. If anything happens, you'll know about it because I want to make this as realistic as possible and signing either of these two or both would be quite the step into a realistic direction. All right, so uh, we can also confirm Massimiliano Allegri is not in the game as of yet. 
And we have agreed a fee for Lucas Biglia, 10.250 thousand million, 10.25 million, is that how you say it? Um, after some negotiating back and forth, I finally have agreed terms. I tried to get him on the cheap, um, because, you know, last year of his contract, you don't want to give players that are uh, running out of contract and are above the age of 30 too much. So we've actually managed to agree a fee under his value, approximately 5 million under his value. I think it was worth 15 million if I looked correctly. But anyways, Lucas Biglia's uh, personal contract, I'll make sure to sort that out. He doesn't have a game face, doesn't matter, I'll still give him whatever he wants. Interesting to note, this time they haven't said what role they want for Lucas Biglia. They're asking me to tell them what I expect from Lucas Biglia and what type of squad role he has. I'm going to go for important. That's interesting as well. So players and agents differ in how they approach negotiations. Okay, they want crucial. That's good to know. And you know what? I'll give it to him. Fair enough. I'm hoping he accept, accepts this deal because we've been going back and forth a couple of times now. Is it enough? It's still not enough. All right, so negotiations can get tough. Uh, like this one, for example. All right, so he needs time. This took a hell of a lot longer than what we had with Renato Sanchez. Sanchez was keen on joining. Lucas Biglia, so he's a little bit more reserved and he's waiting. He doesn't know what to do, which is fair enough. I'm not even going to bother with Leonardo Bonucci right now. We need to sell players first. Interestingly enough, after reviewing our offer, Lucas Biglia and his agent are not happy with it. So I'm going to have to go in and either accept their demands or negotiate it. For the sake of this video, I'm just gonna accept their demands and not wait too much uh, longer. I think that's just what happened. 1.5 million, uh, 1.7 million is what he'll get for achieving 15 clean sheets in the league. That's expensive. But then again, I like that. I like that it's a challenge to sign players of a certain caliber and that they're not just jumping on uh, the first train towards or playing towards your city because you've offered them enough wage. This is what it should be like. Okay, Renato Sanchez, he's a youngster. He's still got a lot to prove. And that's why he was eager to join some uh, a team with the reputation of Milan. Lucas Biglia, however, slightly older, knows what he wants, knows what he has achieved, and maybe is a little bit more seasoned in terms of negotiating. That's uh, what I'm hoping has happened, and it's not just a fluke. Ridiculously stupid and transfer offers still are a part of career mode, though. Let's reject 16 million for Donnarumma. And even if you turned that around and made it 61 million, it wouldn't have been enough. And to complete this career mode test run, we're going to play a game in the preseason tournament we were invited to and have accepted. Uh, Schalke is our opponent today. We're going to test out the 4-3-3 in career mode and see if it is any effective against a team like Schalke. Again, I'm going into this blind. I've played one game offline. I've had a good feel for it. And I feel like I'll do well. This is legendary, of course. Let's see how it goes. Milan with new signing Lucas Biglia in the lineup as well. And not just Biglia is making his debut. Uh, Musacho Rodriguez. Um, Kessier is making his debut as well. So Chalhanoglu as well. We've got a lot of new signings in this team. But the one I actually signed in career mode is also in the lineup. Lucas Biglia. So... Again, this is just a test run. I don't mind losing this. I don't care about the result. I just want to see what the game feels like. And if there's anything interesting that I should point out that's different to FIFA 17, then I will do so. Kickoff, of course, is different. And if you didn't know this, if you press L2 on PlayStation or uh, LT on Xbox, someone's going to go short for the traditional kickoff you had in previous FIFAs. Nice turn by Kessie. Tries to find Andre Silva, and he has done, but just about tackled by Lazio. Let's uh, keep... No, Abate, you idiot. That's a lovely ball, Andre Silva. Can he get away from his man? He tries to pace away from Kerr. Andre Silva turns back nicely. Andre Silva for 1-0, and there we go. Milan take the lead. First goal of the preseason... Oh, it's not even Andre Silva. It's Hakan Chalanoglu. I am um, terribly sorry for that mistake. I assumed... Andre Silva was the focal point of my attack and the furthest man forward, but it was Hakan Chalanoglu who did extremely well to get past his man and a lovely finish. He could play as a striker looking at that, to be fair. One of the few people in the Serie A probably in FIFA 18 with a game face. Again, I'm, I'm not happy with the game faces. They need to add more, not just the Premier League. Oh, lovely ball rolled by Sousa. The Suso, sorry. Oh my god, I'm... I'm not used to commentating, it's been months, so I do apologise. But here we go again, trying to get Kessier involved in the fence as well. Yevgen Konoplyanka trying to get past Abate. Abate reads it well, holds him up, but not enough. Yevgen Konoplyanka finds a man in the middle, finds the man in space. 
the shot drilled over the bar. Got a man out wide here. And his name is Hakan Chahanoglu, who spots the run by uh, Andre Silva. It's a fantastic ball, well defended though by the Schalke defence. Realistically, there's two things you can say about the AI in career mode so far. It's, if you were good at FIFA 17 career mode in playing the computer, you will most likely be good on FIFA 18. However, that could also be a concern. I'm winning this game, my second offline game of FIFA 18, and I'm relatively in control, dominating. Is it worrying that playing the game isn't as much as a challenge anymore? Or is that how it's supposed to be? I'm not sure. I'm... I'm I'm a bit <sighs> uncertain about what to feel about this. I want to be challenged, but I also don't want my skill level from the past few years to be ignored completely. So there you can see again, we cut through them relatively easily. Andre Silva scores two goals. Um, I'm conflicted. I want to be more challenged. I want to be more challenged. I want to be... I want to have it tough playing career mode. But then again... I mean, falling back on what I've learned throughout the years of playing FIFA, maybe that's something that should always stay, that's a quality you should always have, I don't know, it's just practice in a way, so if you were good at FIFA 17, you will probably boss FIFA 18 as well, that's my conclusion so far. Again, note, this is on Legendary for those that haven't listened to uh, when the last time I mentioned it, this is the hardest possible difficulty in my second ever game offline and I'm winning 2-0. I played the Milan Derby offline in kickoff. I went 2-0 down uh, in the first half. And after that, I got used to the game. And I, I think I ended the game 3 all and lost on penalties or something like that. This game has been... Okay, they've bossed possession, but that's what the AR, AI always do. I've taken both my chances. And this is a little bit worrying. Um, this reminds me a lot of FIFA 17, where AI just control the ball... But don't do much with it. In the other game I played, I was relatively positive and it didn't feel that way. This time it feels like FIFA 17 in a way, which I hope is just a one-off. The way Inter played against me in that kickoff game was a lot better, a lot more interesting. And I'm hoping to see better in the second half from Schalke. Jevgen Konoplyanka. Gonna lay it off probably. He is. And I get in front of that. Both defenders actually slide for it, including Kessier, who I wasn't controlling. Which is nice to see. Maybe more AI involvement on your part when they're not controlled. I don't know. Oh no, Bergstaller again. Lots of space here for uh, Guido Bergstaller with the shot off the woodwork. Schalke are getting back into this. My prayers have been answered. They're giving us more of a challenge in the second half. Frank Yannick Kessier holding onto the ball. Finding Hakan Chalanoglu into Andre Silva. Andre Silva plays it back. Kessier, oh, I wanted him to make space for himself. He didn't do that. This time, though, maybe. A good little turn by uh, Bonaventura who goes down, but that's not enough for a penalty, of course. Kessier again. Milan now want to get that two-goal cushion back into Hakan Chalhanoglu. Chalhanoglu inside, too weak. Bonaventura picks it up. Bonaventura with a dink. Lovely ball in, and there it is. 3-1 Milan. I think it's Suso who gets on the score sheet. It must be from the right wing. Cutting into the box. Lovely run as Bonaventura delivers it with his left. That ball in was spectacular. I think crossing has definitely been improved this FIFA, judging by that bullet header by Suso. Accurate as it can be, the goalkeeper rooted to the spot. Oh, Charnoglu sat Stambouli down. Love that, the way he slid in and didn't get the ball. Now uh, through to Frank Yannick Kessier, who's got Suso in the overlap. Suso first time shot straight at the keeper, but I'm still going to keep that highlight in because that ball roll was disgusting. That's well played by Schalke, lovely goal. No complaints there, they tore me a new one again with the passing. I was sliding in, pulling players out of position, and I think it's Guido Bergstaller's second of the game. I'm not sure who scored that one, but Donnarumma rightly so annoyed at his defence. That was way too easy how they cut through me. Like, there I slid in, I shouldn't have. A little one-two, and he's in open space. Easy finish in the end. And it is Bergsall with his second. Lovely ball by Andre Silva in towards Chalhanolu. First time cross. That would have been outrageous if it made it to Suso. Not bad at all, though. Oh, what a ball, Bentaleb. Nabil Bentaleb breaks away. Romagnoli needs to get there. Needs to dive in to avoid a cross. Schalke coming so close to potential equaliser right there, but Milan come away with it, and we're going to hoof that one up the pitch, hoping to uh, put the pressure on maybe, Andre Silva can't do enough though, and Schalke regain control, final five minutes 
Daniel Caligiuri tries to find a pass inside. Cut out, but we give it back to them straight away. Poor by Milan. Daniel Caligiuri. There it is. It's a lovely ball. Rodriguez does enough. Here they come again. Yevgen Konoblianka drills it in there. No one's there in time. And Milan finally get rid of the ball. But again, Schalke. All-out attack, of course, in these final few minutes. Yevgen Konoplyanka down that left-hand side. Ricardo Rodriguez knows him well and cuts it out and launches Andre Silva in a one-on-one -on -one situation with Bitter. Can he do enough with pace? Andre Silva is on his own, unfortunately. Who's he got? He's got no one, and that's wasted. I passed that when there was no one in space, but that is the final whistle. We win the game 3-2, and that was a challenge. That second half, I got what I asked for. A tough team to play a tough challenge and we came out with a win and that makes it a little bit better because it wasn't a straightforward win as you would usually have on FIFA 17 it was good uh, my only worry is I'll get too used to the AI very quickly and end up knowing how to defeat them anyhow but how it's looking right now in the beta the unfinished version I'm, I'm relatively happy with how things are looking and that's where I'm going to end it here, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little test run of career mode. Let me know what you're excited about for next FIFA or career mode in general. What are you looking forward to the most in the new installment of EA Sports FIFA? I'm telling you, there's a few things I'm looking forward to, not just career mode, pro clubs as well. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all later.